Welcome everybody to Design by Peck. This is my video of me pouring cement for a pool patio uh, deck. It already had a cement patio around it, but then there's a bunch of rock, uh, like a rock garden outside of that. And the rocks were not, we didn't think aesthetically pleasing. They trapped pine needles, which were from the pine trees around the, the, the pool. And uh, so what we decided to do is remove the, the rocks and uh, dig it deep and pour cement over uh, the area. Uh, some of the things I want you to pay attention to and the takeaways for this video are, one, don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, this was a two day job for me. I probably should have known it was a two day job. So with the transition from day one to day two, I did not have a clean um, edge to the cement. So it kind of just kind of solidified there overnight. I started pouring again the next day and uh, you could see the line where I stopped one day and started the next day. For those that are seasoned with cement, you are rolling your eyes, I get it. Uh, but this is my first time I did a job this big and I thought I did an okay job. It turned out okay, but obviously there were some issues me doing it. The second thing to do is if you've got a job big enough to require six or more uh, cement bags, bags of cement, I would highly recommend either purchasing or renting a cement mixer. I did all of this with a in a wheelbarrow and a shovel and uh, it was 28 bags of cement. Um, back breaking work. I do not recommend doing that by yourself, which is what I did uh, when you're pouring cement. Uh, so that's my suggestion for anyone doing a, uh, a big cement pour, a big cement project. If you enjoy the video, please like it. And if you want to see more videos by me, please subscribe to my channel. With all that said, here is the video and I'll talk to you after it's done. All right, so here is the uh, dug out area of the, the, the rock garden we had beside the cemented or the cement pool patio. Uh, you can see some of the rocks on the outside of the fence there. Uh, this is after it's already been removed. I'm now tampering it down to make sure it's compact, uh, doing the best I can. Uh, I'm using um, a shovel to kind of take, uh, take some of the, the bigger rocks out. And even after I dug this out, there were still some rocks left in the dirt. So I'm kind of hand removing them. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but uh, that's what I was trying to do right here. It was hard to get into that corner. So I did a lot of stuff by hand there to get into that corner and tampering it down. And um, right now uh, I'm trying to put a, a rope on the far side uh, against the fence so that I can measure the slope from the edge of the current concrete pool patio so that the water would drain away from the pool. Uh, this, this is actually harder than I thought it would be. In particular, there is um, cracks in the existing concrete and as well between section to section it was not entirely level but here i am trying to do the best of i best i can making sure that there's at least some gradient so that it sloped downwards i wasn't i wasn't measuring the, exactly the the degrees of the slope maybe um if i was uh more seasoned there'd be a specific grade uh, that i would be looking for but for now, I just wanted to make sure that there was some type of slope sloping away. So that's what that rope was for. And that was there to line up the two by four that you see right here that I am installing. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use that as the one edge uh, of my frame for the cement pour. And then I'm here again, I'm using a level again to make sure that it's at the height that I want so that there's a slight slope down. This was actually a perfect day to do a pour as well. The sun was out, it wasn't too hot. It was, um, it was just uh, cool enough so that I wasn't overheating and it was warm enough that it wasn't cold at all. 
so here I am. I raked it a little bit. I thought this would help get some of the bigger rocks out from in the dirt. Because when I was tampering it down, uh, the tamper would hit these big rocks. And I wasn't able to get some compactness into the dirt. So I did some raking to get some of the bigger rocks out. And that's why you saw the, the, the dirt all raked up there. So now here I am. I'm putting in uh, some pebbles into the base of the of the pour. I read that this helps with draining the water. I thought this would be important to do. So after I compacted the dirt, I put the pebbles down. Then I went and compacted this again by hand. Um, even though this is a fairly big job, I know some people use a, a me mechanical or machine compactor. I don't know if that's the exact word for it, but you could tell by the shape of this pour that there was no way I was going to be able to use something like that. This was definitely a, 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 a job that was going to have to be done by hand in order to tamper the and compact the, the dirt and the pebbles. So you can see here I used some wooden stakes to align the 2x4 in place. I know that there is uh, probably better ways to do it, but I've got uh, some wood 2x4 on the outer edge and then some stakes on the inside edge. And I was just going to pull the stakes out once I started to pour the cement because the cement will hold it in place. And now here I'm showing the rebar, the mesh wire that I use for rebar to help strengthen the, the, the pour, the cement. Uh, I, I used some thicker pieces of rebar at the very tiny edge here just because I was worried about strength and I felt like that would, might be a likely place for cracking. So I just put some rebar, some big, uh, what is it, probably half inch thick rebar there. But then the rest of it was just wire mesh, steel mesh. Um, and I think that's going to be sufficient or plenty of strength for the patio. Here I am now shoveling, um, like pouring, mixing the cement with a shovel and a wheelbarrow and uh, a, a hose. And this is why I said if you're going to do more than probably six bags, I highly suggest doing a cement mixer, either buying one or borrowing one or renting one. Please make sure you are uh, take into account safety. I have, as you can see, gloves on, and then I'm about to put on a dust mask as well. I didn't have the dust mask when I cut the cement bag open there, but you'll see me later on have a dust mask on. You see right there with some safety goggles as well. Uh, you don't want that dust getting in your lungs. You don't want the cement all over your hands. Uh, probably dry cement. It's not too bad, but once you start mixing it with water, you're going to probably not want to have your hands all mixing through the cement. It's better to have the rubber gloves. So you can imagine, this is bag number one out of 28. Uh, I started with 80 pound bags, and that's what I was mixing with for the first, I believe, six maybe? Um, and then after that, I went to 60 pound bags just because doing this by myself with all the mixing, uh, I just, it was too much strain on my back lifting the 80 pound bags over and over and over again. So I went to the 60 pound bags. Sure, it might have cost me a few pennies more on this job, but considering I was doing it by myself, uh, I was willing to pay the extra money. Another reason why I think it's better to use a cement mixer, at least for me, is I had struggled uh, in, to properly or to get a good mix. Uh, you want to have an oatmeal consistency for the cement. I tended to uh, probably add too much water just to make it easier to work with. But the more water you add, the easier it is to work with. But the more water you add also... Yeah, the, the, the strength of it goes down. 
So the less water, the higher the strength, the more the water, the less of the strength. So there's a, there's a compromise when you add extra water. I did what I can, what I thought I could get away with for the, for the least amount of water, but still making it manageable to work with. And there's pour number one out of 28 bags. So right now, this is kind of getting later in the day. I can't remember exactly the time. It might be around, you know, six o'clock. Um, and so it was it was already a long day. So I knew or pretty much knew I was not going to be able to finish the whole um, the whole pour. And I was going to have to stop at some point. This is why I said it in my lessons learned at the beginning to not bite up more than you can chew. Uh, I should have had at least a contingency plan to have a barrier to kind of end the frame, uh, add a frame wherever I needed to add it to kind of end the pour and have that as a natural edge so that when I poured the next day, it would look like it was meant to be or meant to be that way with, with, a, with a joint right in that place. But so, since I wasn't prepared for that... Um, and this is fairly thick, you know, oatmeal consistency cement. Ah, uh, yeah. I just kind of at one point stopped for the day. Well, now I'm going to apologize for using the word cement for most of this video. And uh, just realize that I should be calling it concrete because con cement is an ingredient of concrete. So, uh, so going forward for this video, I'll be calling it concrete. So here I am, you can, I, I already know that, so this is near the end of the day. You can see the shadows or the uh, coming on. It's So, you know how I, I mixed this with hand in a wheelbarrow and I, I think I was getting tired by the end of the day that I added too much water because I wanted to make it easy, more manageable to use. By adding too much water, you can see that there was just a lot of water kind of floating to the top here of the concrete. It ended up not being a problem for me when it dried. It was fine, but um, ultimately that was just too much water. And next time uh, I need to be better or more careful with my mixing uh, with the concrete. So here's now day number two. You can kind of see near the top, I, about one quarter of the way down from the very top is where I stopped for the day. This now here, I've been pouring for a while. Um, I have plastic down to kind of cover and protect the existing concrete. You can see the rebar there. And uh, it's going faster the next day. You know, I had a little bit more energy. I'm screeding here. Uh, for those of you that don't know what screeding is, that's where you take essentially a wood plank and, and shimming it across um, the level of the concrete. You usually have a, a frame on one side and a frame on the other side and the board kind of sits on top. And it kind of pushes the high concrete down and it fills in the low concrete. So it kind of ensures that you've got a relatively flat surface relative to the two sides of the frame. And in this case, since the outer two by fours are at a slightly lower level than the existing concrete patio on the right, it's going to have, by design, when you screed it, a slope that slopes outwards towards the rock garden and the, and the fence. So here I go. Uh, I'm finishing this up. Uh, I'm getting faster at it. I'm getting better at it. I also know that when you're pouring concrete, you want to have an artificial joint. So here I am creating an artificial joint in the concrete. And what that does is that uh, that's done with a, a hand groover or a hand joiner. And that uh, forces the concrete to intentionally crack at the very bottom of that joint. So you don't see it from an eye, from with your eyes. So aesthetically, everything looks good. But since concrete tends to crack, you want to kind of dictate where it cracks. And so that's what I did there by adding that joint, that artificial joint. And also to kind of make it um, aesthetically pleasing, I used an edger uh, around the edge of the, um, the whole patio. 
You can see me doing it right now. Um, it, my leg's in the way a little bit, but I'm using an edger there uh, to kind of create a curved corner on the, on the concrete. So it's not sharp, it's not rough, it kind of, uh, not that that would matter, I guess, but I think it's just more pleasing visually when you do something like that. There I am also troweling the cement. Troweling is an art that I'm still getting comfortable with. Sure, I'm doing it. I think I'm doing an okay job. I know there's um, people say you need a year's worth of practice to be really good at troweling. I have obviously very limited practice at this, but I watched a lot of videos on it. There's a technique to it. I'm not going to show you the technique of that in this video. Um, maybe that's something that I will plan to do later on to show you uh, some of the motions with your hand and, and how you have the edge and how you slide it across the top of the concrete in order to get the, uh, the surface you want. Once this is all done and I do some more edging uh, around this area where I am pouring right now, I take a broom, um, a broom end to kind of broom or sweep the top of the concrete to create a, uh, a rough surface like you see here. And this will give the concrete some some grip to it so it's not as slippery when you walk on it when it's wet with your bare feet. I also want to apologize that uh, I think my batteries um, died at near the end of the pour and I don't show you the very end completion of the patio, con pool patio here, but or the pool deck here. But uh, you get the gist of what the work that I have remaining. I'm going to do some more pouring. I'm going to do some more edging. I don't add a new artificial joint. Uh, hopefully this length of, of uh, pool deck is not too big to cause it to crack, but we will see what happens over the next few years. And I apologize for that terrible edit going from almost complete to the finished product, but here you go. Here it is. I'm, I'm still really happy with it despite some of the possible uh, imperfections on it from my first job. Uh, from my first big concrete job, I'm really happy with it. And this is just part one of the pool deck that I'm going to be con uh, pouring concrete. There's uh, three other sides that are much bigger than this, or one of the sides are much bigger than this that I'm going to be doing this to as well. So this is my try number one. As you can see, uh, I thought it turned out pretty good. Actually, I thought it turned out really good for certainly my skill level, my inexperience. Uh, I've worked with cement before, nothing on any project like this. I've done a uh, cement tables. I've done uh, working on cement fire pit tables as well and cement benches but uh, this was a big leap in the size of project I had to do or that I performed and um, yeah sure there was issues sure it could have gone better but at the end of the day I was really proud of what I did uh, I think a lot of you can learn from my experience doing the cement patio and I uh, I would love to get feedback from you. Let me know your comments of things you I did terribly wrong or things I did great uh, as well. Please do not forget to like this video. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.